Hello everyone, this is Jesus Fernandez with a new tutorial on how to create the subsurface scattering material with the Redshift material. But first, I want to thank all the patrons that made this tutorial possible, as this is the first patron sponsored tutorial that we have here on our YouTube channel, and we are going to have one more tutorial monthly. So thank you all, right now we have more than 80 patrons on our channel. I want you all to remember that we have a free Redshift license sponsored by the amazing Redshift team that we are going to give away on our Patreon channel. So if you are supporting the channel with more than $10, you are participating for the Redshift license. The giveaway is going to be uh, the first week of September. Now let's start working on the actual tutorial. First, let's put a new material you are going to see here my tries material and we're going to apply the material to our actual sculpt dragon I forgot to tell you this material here you can download the material from 3dscans.com uh, 3d con with letters and not with numbers so you can download the material there I'm going to render the new image for you to see As you can see here, this is our basic model with the basic material. The lighting setup that I have, it's a cylinder lighting on top and an HDRI that it's giving me the light for the field light and the environment light. As you can see here, this is the result of the lighting setup. For the redshift material, I turn off the weight of the reflection for you to see just the clay render with no reflection. And for the light setup, I have a cylinder light on top of my dragon and a dome light that it's giving me the blue hue that you can see in some of the diffuse and indirect lighting. Also, you patrons can download this scene with the material and you can you have been seeing this scene. This is my neutral scene for testing purposes. It's the same that we use on the procedural material tutorial for pattern. Now, if we go down to the subsurface scattering, first, to explain what is happening here, I need to explain what is subsurface scattering. The subsurface scattering happens when the light penetrates a surface and its material absorbs and scatters the light inside that object and the light exits the object on a different angle. And right now with the scatter we have a lot of scatter on the center of the object when it hits the actual uh, content of the material. We have two ways or two different patterns that can happen when you work with surface scattering. The first one is the forward scattering. Forward scattering where it will happen when the rays will scatter away from the light source so they will continue the direction of the light ray and the second way that the scatter can happen is backward scattering and scatter happens towards the light source so it bounces sort of back inside of the object and bounces back towards the light source why did i try to explain this because it's really important for you to understand at how much the light rate is going to penetrate the object. Transmittance refers at how many units the light rate is going to penetrate the object. And we are going to have transmittance color and absorption scale. The extinction works different and it, you're going to see that the actual parameters change. So we're going to start working with the transmittance. First, we're going to start with a uh, transmittance color. But to make the actual redshift subsurface scattering to work, even, let me apply the IP here, even if I change the transmission color, nothing is going to change. Why? We need to enable the scatter scale to tell the redshift render that they should use or it should calculate the subsurface scattering effect. So I'm going to change the scatter scale to 1. And now you can see here how the object is scaling the image. I'm going to turn off the bulk effect that I have for my scene. And that way we are going to have faster renders. 
Okay, you can see here that now we have some effect on the subsurface scattering. If I put my render scale, my scatter scale to zero, there's no more scattering effect. Now, the transmittance color, as we said before, the darker the color means full light absorption and that the object should be a solid. So if the color is black, we are going to go back to the actual look where we don't have color over here. And if we put the transmittance color to one, we have again the effect. As you saw, the render is scaling each time that I change a parameter. If you don't want that to happen, you can just go to options and check the auto resize and now you can change your parameters and it's going to work again and without changing the scale of the object. On transmittance color, we can change the color here and it's going to affect directly the render and what's the color that we are going to have. And this is going to happen with transmitters. Now the absorption scale. Absorption scale, as the word says, it scales the transmission effect. Zero, again, means no absorption. So the object will not absorb anything. But it works better if you do have a color here on the transmittance. If you have gray values, the effect is not going to be that visible. And larger values means a stronger absorption and thus a denser looking material. And the meaning of that, if I go to a value of 100 here, let me show you. In the face, it's going to be more obvious. And let me change to a more uh, visible value, maybe yellow. Yellow should work. As you saw, there's a really close to, to none effect here where the actual change on the transmittance color can affect incorrectly the render system. But we are going to affect that because we have a, a scaling effect on the, on the absorption. If I go for one on the absorption, everything is going to work correctly and the scaling effect is not going to be that visible. I had that weird behavior because my absorption scale was so big that it was multiplying my transmittance color. So remember to always check how much you have on your absorption scale because it's going to multiply your value on the actual render. So let's say that we have this value here and I want to make my object to look denser. So I can go to a value of 10 on the scale and you can see here that now my object is denser and the subsurface scattering effect is not that visible anymore. But if I go to a value of 0 0.1, the object now, it's, it has more transmittance, but also looks completely different. And here I have a more vivid effect. Why does the actual color here is changing? because when I underscale my, my value here, it's actually desaturating the value also. So you're going to affect that one too. If you want to have a better value, you can play also with the actual color and then get a more natural look. Normally, you should maintain this color depending on the actual look with gray. I like to use this color to change the color instead of the scatter coefficient with uh, the extension uh, way to make it, it's easier to control the subsurface scattering effect. So that's the other way to work around there. So we have transmittance color and the absorption scale scales the absorption effect of my transmittance. If I go to a value of 10, you can see here that the value is going to be denser and denser. Now, I can put a really high value like this and just go to multiply for a higher value everything and you're going to see that I still have my bright yellow value here but I can also also maintain the dense look over my material so let's go back for value of one and let's change everything back to a more natural look over here 
something like that. Now, we have some subsurface effects. After that, we have the scatter coefficient. Here, it works with uh, scientific units. So if I go to a color, uh, a wider color here, and let's put some values that should give me a nice effect, something like that, and I put my color over here, you're going to see that I do have my value. But what's happening and why there is a blue color there? Because with transmittance, you can actually affect uh, incorrectly the color on the uh, material. Both methods works, but you should use them carefully. That's why I like to use gray values on my scatter coefficient when working on transmittance. And I use the color on the transmittance uh, color to adjust everything over here. Now, the scatter coefficient affects the attenuation and larger values will make the center of the object to appear uh, cloudy. If we go to a dark value or zero value, we have no subsurface scattering effect. And if I go higher, the higher that I go, the less denser the object looks. And as I go with a value that should be higher and higher, the center of the object it's going to have a more vivid effect of the subsurface and the subsurface is going to move towards the sides of the object the ones the parts that don't have that that much volume so you have that one there and what if i want to go over the value here that if i look over here the cap is a level of 0 0.822 it's not actually one when I go here, I go now over almost one, but you can see here that we are still half a cap over there, but it's not getting to one. Why? Because we have also the scatter scale. And the scatter scale it scales the scatter coefficient. As simple as that. So you can control the scale that you want to achieve here. So I can change my scale and tell my scatter coefficient to work only towards the border or I can take it to a lower value and control the scale of the coefficient over here. So you can decide how much to tweak here and how much a scatter you want, but the scatter scale, it's going to show the scatter coefficient scale. That was why when we have zero here, we didn't have any effect. And the default value should be around one, but you can achieve your different looks, uh, let's say marble, or skin, I don't know what you want to achieve by combining both of these parameters. I like to use a higher value to move the scatter effect towards the end of the object, as this is a denser material. Now, the last setting that we're going to look here, we have the face. As I told you before, the subsurface scattering effect has two behavior, backwards scattering and forward scattering. With face, you can control which are you going to use or which do you want to use here. A phase of zero is going to have uh, the middle ground between both the scenarios. And if you go to a value of one, let me move my actual zone over here. And I want to adjust the color for you to see it better. If we have a value of one, we are going to have forward scattering. It should be a little bit less than one. With a value of one, you're going to have a almost perfect scattering and it's going to disable the effect. With a value of one, the light is going to move away from the light source. Remember that my main light source is a cylinder over here and the light it's bouncing or it's emitting from here and it's been scattered inside of the object and it scatters away, moving away from the light source. That it's forward scattering. So if you, if you put the face on positive values, you're going to have an effect of forward scattering. And contrary to that, if you move your uh, slider back toward negative numbers, you will have backwards scattering, meaning that the light is going to bounce back 
towards the light source. As I do have a HDRI here, you can see that the light is bouncing back. Let me turn off my HDRI and you can see here how does my light, it's been received by the actual volume and it bounces back, it moves towards the light source. I can see that the darker volumes do not receive any light source over here. But when I move again towards my material, let me show you here, and I change to positive values, you can see here how the light is passing through the object and now I do have more information here than what I had here. If I move backwards again, the information is moving back and I have more information here and I have less information of the subsurface scattering here. That's how the redshift scattering material works. Let me turn off again my light here and now it's time to actually configure a working material that you saw here on the render. For this material, we have one more step that we need to decide first. Let me put my absorption scale to value of 1 and just to set everything as a base. And I want to have a forward scattering effect. As you saw here, I have a gray value always. And that's because we have the diffuse color on and the color is gray. If I change this color to a cyan color, you can see that the information here now has the cyan color as my main color. For this test, we are going to use a green color here, maybe something like that, as my base color. Now, let's move back to the transmittance color. My transmittance color sounds good about here, and I want full saturation and less value. Let's see how does it's looking now. I think that my green it's really hard. I don't want a uh, green that looks that hard. Something like that should look better. Let me see for the actual tone of my material just to have the same tone. Let me select back the material here to my darker color. And we are going to change my absorption scale to a value of 12. Why? because we want to achieve an effect that shows the scale or the subsurface scattering effect just towards the tips or the back of the object. If I put a value of one, you're going to see here that the effect is really visible and it looks like glass. And I don't want the material to look like glass right now. So I will move my slider or the slider away and I will put a value around 12. Now I can see the effect around the tips and it's a more simpler effect now that I can control a little bit better. But I do want to have the effect to move and to have that forward scattering effect that looks really, really great here. So I'm going to affect a little bit the scale here with a value of 8.1. Here you can adjust as you want, but I prefer to have lower values and as this slider is not going until the one value I prefer to open the value here and to adjust the value over there than to move this the slider. For the scattering scale if we move the scale a little bit down you're going to see that we're going to have less visible effect here so I want to have a more visible effect something around a little bit more over here and the effect is just a tiny bit more visible and for the face I want to have a face like that. Now that we have the scale we have the transmittance effect the transmittance effect should look something like that I like it. Let's render this guy to see how it's looking on the actual render now. Now that you can see the result here, we will check that the effect is passing through the actual geometry of the object. And I had to make some little changes on the configuration to achieve the actual effect. And the final configuration was a 
little bit brighter the value here on the color and the absorption is scaled to a value of 12.238 the scatter coefficient with a value of 0 0.813 and the scatter scale it went with a value of 1.708 for the face I got a value of 0 0.344 and with that configuration we can achieve a look that let the light pass through the object and the forward scattering effect is going to affect the behavior of the, earth, of the light correctly and you can see here that the effect is on but we still need to adjust the reflection and for the roughness I decided to a value of 0.8382 and that is going to give me a glossy result here now let's render this one and let's check how it's going to look now this is the final result of the actual render setup and how does the material look now I want to explain a little bit how to work with the scale and how to test that the material has these nice effects on the border and it's not so easy to have that kind of transmission that you have the borders uh, with a little bit of subsurface scattering but the inner part of the model does not have that effect and the easiest way that I find or found to make it work was to work with a cubes and with cube setups that is these three cubes here and let me render these guys with an IPR so what I did here let's select the material what I did here is that I have the material to work uh, with a scale of one centimeter of one Maya unit two Maya units three four and five so you can see that at one centimeter the light is going to pass through the object and it's going to scatter through all the whole centimeter and after you scale the object you're going to see that the effect is going to be less visible and move towards the border of the actual object and if I go here and change the scale and then tone down the scale a little bit more you can see here that everything is starting to move and you can see that as I move the scale, the scatter scale further away, uh, let's put the value of 3, you are going to have a denser look on the volume of the object and the scatter effect is going to move towards the tip or towards the borders and we are going to have denser looks on the center of each border and you can see it even here on the centimeter that you are going to have a scatter scale that it's not going to transmit not even one centimeter and if I go and move the face you can see that the backward scattering works the same and you have a more or less visible effects towards the different direction of the source of light with that will be all for the scattering effect tutorial I hope you guys like it and the next tutorial we're going to do the same but with extinction and the second tutorial the third tutorial is going to be about subsurface multiple scattering and the last tutorial it's going to be about how to optimize the renders when working with subsurface scattering I want to thank you all for looking to the tutorial and if you like please subscribe to the tutorial remember to support the channel patron and remember that we have a giveaway this month and you can win a free redshift license thanks to the support and the sponsorship of the redshift team uh, thank you all for the support and to watching that for watching the tutorial and happy rendering